Okay, today we're going to look at oxidative phosphorylation and the use of NAD. So the goals for this is that we know firstly where the NADH has come from, where the FADH has come from, what goes in, which is oxygen, what's produced, which is water, and obviously a colossal quantity of ATP which is the energy currency for the cell. So if we begin by looking at we started with a three carbon compound produced by um, glycolysis which was pyruvate. So this pyruvate um, remember was turned into two carbon acetyl and then this joint to a four carbon compound and then this was obviously the Krebs cycle we had the production of carbon dioxide and this happens at two points three points and this was covered in the previous video um, and this produced reduced NAD where an electron was accepted by the NAD forming NADH, reduced NAD and this happens once in uh, link reaction and three times in Krebs cycle. Also the Krebs cycle produces another reduced co coenzyme carrier which is FAD Okay, so our three compounds we're interested in, sorry, two compounds we're interested in here are these NADHs and this FAD. Remember, the link reaction and Krebs cycle has also produced um, three carbon dioxides, which has mean that you've decarboxylated the three carbon pyruvate, and that all of this has occurred in the matrix of the mitochondrion. Okay, so if we consider our mitochondria, we have an outer membrane, and then we have an inner membrane, and the inner membrane has an irregular shape. These um, invaginations, these in bits here, these are called Christi. And the purpose of them is to increase the surface area so you have a larger surface area for the, the proteins associated with oxidative phosphorylation. So it's important not to say, just say it's got a larger surface area, you have to say it's got a larger surface area for those proteins so you can have more oxidative phosphorylation because there's more proteins for the electron transport chain. Also remember in a mitochondria you have a loop of DNA because some of the um, proteins in mitochondria are coded for by a loop of DNA in that mitochondria. Some of those proteins are coded for by genes which are in the nucleus of the eukaryotes as well. Now we also have to have ribosomes because ribosomes are the bright type of protein synthesis. Um, the process that occurs in the matrix of the mitochondria, which is effectively the cytoplasm of the mitochondria, is obviously that this is where we have um, the link reaction um, and then the formation of the Krebs cycle. Now what we said we produced was electrons and these electrons are then picked up by our carrier molecule called NAD. Uh, which becomes reduced from the NADH. Now in order for this process to continue, these um, you have to get rid of the electrons that are on the NADH. The way that's done is that they go off to the electron transport chain, which is on the inner mitochondrial membrane, deliver those electrons, and they get regenerated to NAD. Now we're going to have a closer look at what happens on the inner mitochondrial membrane. So this part here is the matrix where the link reaction and the Krebs cycle occur. This is the gap between the two membranes, this is the outer membrane, the inner membrane is the gap. And the first thing that happens is that the NAD, the reduced NAD, 
which has been made in link reaction, Krebs cycle and also in glycolysis, this delivers electrons to a big carrier molecule, a big reduction, oxidation reduction molecule, um, which is on the inner membrane. Now, as this becomes reduced by accepting the electron, it uses some of that energy to push hydrogen ions from where there are few to where there are lots. So the energy in this electron here is used to push protons, that is hydrogen ions, from the matrix into the gap between the two membranes. So on the in the matrix there are less hydrogen ions. And but in the gap between the two that between the two membranes there are more hydrogen ions. So the energy in this electron is being used to move the hydrogen ions against their gradient. So this electron transport chain pumps protons from the matrix into the gap between the two. This electron is then passed to another um, carrier molecule, which is another part of the electron transport chain. So this electron, which um, has reduced this carrier molecule, part of the electron transport chain, is then passed on to the next one here. So this then becomes reduced, and then that is going to push more protons across the membrane from where there are few to where there are lots. Um, so this process continues with um, this electron being passed down a chain of carriers repeatedly, always pushing protons across the membrane. At the end of this, uh, at the end of this process, we have to get the electron off the final electron uh, acceptor in this in this um, chain. So the way this is done is that the electron joins with oxygen and hydrogen to produce water. So we've delivered the electron from the reduced NAD. That electron has gone down a series of um, molecules in the inner mitochondrial membrane called the electron transport chain. And this moves hydrogen ions across the membrane from where there are few to where there are lots. So they're moving against their concentration gradient. At the end of this, oxygen has joined with electrons and hydrogen to produce water. So throughout this process, what we've achieved is a proton gradient. This is a gradient of hydrogen ions, but also of a electrical potential because those hydrogen ions are positive. So this is known as an electrochemical gradient. <laughs> so to summarize again, the NAD we have regenerated from NADH and the electron has been passed down a chain of carriers called the electron transport chain on the inner mitochondrial membrane. And at the end of it, the electron has joined with oxygen and hydrogen to produce water. Now, that has pushed protons across the membrane. Quite a few protons, lots of protons have gone across the membrane. This process is called oxidative phosphorylation because what's going to happen next is that the proton gradient that we've generated through this oxidation of the electrons, that proton gradient is going to be dissipated by allowing the protons to flow out down their concentration gradient from the gap between the two mitochondrial membranes into the mitochondrial matrix. Now, as they do do that, they flow through an amazing enzyme called ATP synthase. Now, 
synthase comes you know, is to make. So here we've got an enzyme that makes the uh, ATP, and it makes it in a what fashion? It rotates, um, and it uses the Hirschnine gradient to dr to drive the rotation of part of the enzyme, which then takes ADP. And add phosphate to it to make ATP. What we can see is that it's the electrons that have been removed from glycolysis, the link reaction, and Krebs cycle that are transferred onto a big carrier molecule called NAD that then travel onto the chain, the electron transport chain, that move through a series of oxidation and reduction reactions till finally they join with oxygen to produce water. The energy involved in that is used to push protons against their gradient, from where they do want to be to where they don't want to be. So that requires energy. Those protons then flow out through ATP synthase and that generates ATP, and that is aerobic respiration because it's consuming oxygen, because oxygen is the final electron acceptor on the electron transport chain.